Okay, um, this is going to be a video that just talks about our next assignment, which is called menus. Uh, here is just a simple example. Uh, some of you may remember this happening uh, a few years ago in um, when there was an emergency alert in Hawaii and uh, there was a problem that it was supposed to be a drill, but the menu that was supposed to be selected for what uh, for it being a drill was um, uh, mistakenly, it, it wasn't the drill that was selected, it was the actual thing. And then furthermore, there actually wasn't a way of saying, oops, there was a false alarm. And so you can even check on the um, Washington Post article. So this is one of the reasons why testing is super important. Um, we are going to talk about what a menu is in theory. It is a, um, an interactor which supports a selection of items from a fixed set of options. The options are determined most of the time in advance, although there are ways of changing menus on the fly. There's also reasons why you might not want to do that in terms of uh, what users are used to. And typically these things are thought of as commands like open, right? These are verbs, actions that are um, that happen or occasionally for selecting something like a font or a style. Um, in the counter app, we used a predefined hamburger menu, which is just basically a menu that is kind of shortened down so that uh, it's, it's not seen, but we can, we have that little affordance that we know we can go click on it. And then we determined what had been clicked through the on options item selected callback. So now we're gonna create our own menu interactors. And um, the cool thing about this, we learned about PPSs today, is that a menu uses the same PPS pretty much no matter what type of menu you have. Basically, there is a press. If the mouse goes down inside the menu, it'll start a selection. And as we drag, we're in the selecting state. And so we're updating the model of what is actually selected in the menu. And if we release, then um, we actually are um, selecting that and then we do the action based on the selection. So this is kind of cool that this one PPS can work in uh, all menus or at least all the menus that we're going to do. So there are a lot of different sample menu types. We are actually going to talk a little bit more on Monday about you know, why you might want to choose one versus another. Uh, a pull down menu are the things that we often see you know, at the top of our Macs or at the top of our, um, you know, here's an example, there is a pull down menu. Um, a pie menu is a different type of menu that when you click in the middle, the uh, choices radiate out from the center. Um, and so it's really easy to just quickly pick something going from one side to the other. So one of the things that we're going to be trying to determine in our menus uh, assignment is which of these is better and why. And you're also going to create your own custom menu that should be creative and nothing like a pull down menu or a pie menu. Um, so the assignment itself is doing a little bit more with event handling APIs, in particular this on touch uh, event handler. Um, and handle that on touch properly. We're going to practice some more using output uh, with on draw. And we're also going to do something where we create our own developer defined callback so that we can help maintain this separation of concerns. Um, lots of different HCI goals. So we're not only going to be creating rectangular, but we'll also be creating non rectangular interactors. Uh, we're going to be really exploring this idea of a propositional production system or PPS. Um, and then we're also the big part of this is that we are going to record a user study, we're going to actually consent and get uh, users to try our different menus. Uh, we're going to come up with some hypothesis and we're going to see if our experimental results play out these hypotheses. Um, 
And part of it, again, is designing your own interactor uh, and determining how that fares against these other two common interactors. Okay, so we are going to provide you um, uh, a couple of different parts of the activity. There are gonna be two versions. One is a test activity, which will just allow you to test your menus sort of unfettered. And then the experiment activity, which is what you're gonna run when you're using it with, different, uh, with your three different users. So basically you're gonna implement these three different types of menus and you're gonna hook it up to this test code, um, this instrumented testing code. Um, the implementation of this, is, uh, I think I'm going to demonstrate it first before I jump into the implementation. So um, you can see these are the different files. We briefly talked about enums. I'm not gonna open these up because I actually have a solution here. So I'm gonna go ahead and run my solution. I thought I had it running. Turns out I didn't. Hope it didn't crash. All right, we're gonna try this again. Turns out my machine had gotten into a little bit of a tizzy, a little bit of a kernel panic because I had too much going on. Uh, but let's try this again. So here we go. This would be actually in our uh, experiment view. Um, it's telling me what I am supposed to select. So if I clicked on it right now, it would say pop up with my um, normal menu and I'm supposed to select bottom left. And what it's actually doing is it's telling me that I selected bottom left, you know, and I could click again. Oh, I'm supposed to select it three times, right? Now it's telling me select left. And what it's doing is it's actually timing how long it takes me to do this. Um, and we'll talk about the experimental design later. Um, what I want to do is show you that I can um, switch, maybe, come on, switchy, switchy. Um, ignore these for now. I'm going to switch to test mode and cancel the experiment. So I'm switching into the mode where I am allowed to test um, the, the menus. Ignore that little arrow thing I, I, that's cleaned up in your version. So here um, I am actually able to test my three menus my normal menu, my pie menu, and my custom menu, or I could go back to the experiment. So I'm gonna click and here's my normal menu and it tells me which one is selected when I sort of play around with these things, but it's not really doing anything other than throwing up this toast. I can switch to my pie menu and you can notice that actually I, I click and instead of starting at the upper left-hand corner, it actually is starting in the center and I can radiate out and select which menu item I want there. And then finally, you are going to create your own custom menu. Mine looks like this, which is a little crazy. Um, you can try and make the faster menu or you could try and make a slower menu. Um, so this is the object hierarchy that you will be working with. As I um, pointed out, here is, this is the student version. You have your enums, which is the menu types, right? Pi, normal, and custom. We have our states. This is for our uh, PPS. Um, and then this is the task type that has to do with our experimental design. Um, you will be modifying custom menu view, menu experiment view, normal, pi, and experiment activity or the, the menu or the, the um, different um, uh, files that you will actually modify. Um, and so it's really important, again, that you go through and you read these and see what these are. For instance, you'll see that the normal menu view actually um, inherits from the menu experiment view, which you can also see here, right? So we have our abstract main activity and we have the two different types of activities. Um, we have this thing called a trial listener. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, and then we also, uh, we have our view hierarchy, and then these are our enums. Oops, okay. Um, we, in menu experiment view, you are actually going to handle this on touch event using the same PPS that we were just talking about, um, where press is a mouse down, 
we are going to call start selection we'll go into a state called selecting and then we'll be updating the model and then when we release we will actually end the selection pushing ourselves back into the start state uh, these are the two types of menus um, the drawing piece is actually going to feel very familiar in a way to what you did with doodle so thinking about what is the bounding box and where is the menu actually popping up relative to that um, uh, the, the cursor that gets clicked down. So I mentioned this trial listener. This is something called a custom listener. And so we're gonna talk very briefly about what they are and why we should use them. Um, they are used in menus um, and they are a way of separating concerns so that an object that needs information can get a message to update that information when the model is changed without having you know the model have to call directly into the the view and vice versa this is a way of being able to swap things out pretty easily i could put in i could create anything that um listens for a, a change and then does something um uh, to, to visualize that change. So a really good example of this is um, a model that maybe sends multiple views information on state changes. I always like to think about an Excel spreadsheet where if some of the data changes, we might have a pivot table that changes on a different um, on a different page. We might also have um, like a graph that changes based on sort of a table and the table would be the model and the graph and the pivot table would be different views. So um, how do you implement these custom listeners? We have to define, um, we need an object that will uh, uh, basically inform the other objects about changes. And I think it's, um, let's just go through sort of the, uh, the, the nuts and bolts of this. You know, basically we create something that spreads the, you know, that keeps track of who's listening and then sends the messages to those things that are listening. And then anything using the changes will basically implement this listener interface and just register itself with the view so it can listen for the, the messages. So this is very similar to what we did with the enclosure listener um, that I registered you all, you, created the interface which was to make noise and i registered you all by keeping track of what all the enclosures were so step one you're going to create the interface you know my listener and it has to have um, a method that'll be used later step two in the object that is going to disseminate the information you need to actually keep track of all the listeners that will wind up um, connecting with you. So for instance, if you only need one thing to listen to you, you would only have a singleton, my listener and listener, but you could create a list of listeners as well. Um, and in the old color picker, we actually had that, we had a list of listeners in um, menus, we're only just gonna have one listener uh, that gets the information. You also need to have some way of registering the listener. So usually if there's a singleton, you'll say set my listener. If there is um, uh, a bunch of them that can be kept in a list, you would say add listener. You'd also probably have something that says remove listener. So you could take a listener out of the list and it gets very dynamic. Step three, somewhere else in the object, you actually need to go through all the listeners that are registered and just call this interesting event. So in other words, whatever the object is that is registered itself with you know, my object, I need to call on interesting event. Okay, so where is that gonna go? That is whatever the listening object is. So in other words, the listening object must implement my listener or there must be some way to create the callback. Remember, there are five different ways you can create the callback. So in this particular case, usually on either instantiation of a view or create, you actually set up the listener 
to listen to the object. This could also be an anonymous inner class. It could be any of the ways that you, um, uh, that, that you feel comfortable implementing. The important thing is whatever implements my listener must implement the on interesting event. When we get called by the thing that is going to, oops, where'd it go? Here it is, where it says M listener call on interesting event. It's going to call this method and we're going to do something with the information that gets sent. Um, also, you can have parameters. Uh, if you want to, it, you are defining the interface. You can do it with it as you please. So, um, if we had been in person, I would have had you do a little think pair share about thinking about how on click listener and view click view slash on click event actually are on, uh, yeah, on click, um, yeah, uh, view dot on click. It shouldn't be on click event actually works. We are going to use it in menus as a way of communicating, communicating back to the experiment that we need to record data. It keeps us from coupling too tightly between the menu view and the experiment. And so we can keep changing what view is listening or what, what yeah, we can keep changing what is being listened to, which view is being listened to. So we've created this trial listener. Um, and it implements one method on trial complete, and it takes one parameter, which is the experiment trial. In our abstract menu view, um, which is going to be listening for these changes, um, we are going to register the, M, the trial listener. And uh, so we, it is just a singleton, so we're just using a set trial listener to keep track of this. So you are somewhere else going to call the listener. You are going to basically, now that we have this all set up, something has attached itself to the view, we are you are going to set it up so that you are actually going to instantiate you know, the call to the listener. The other piece of this is that you are actually going to have to create the listener somewhere else in your code that actually gets set up and connected to the view that's gonna then call, call back into your code. So there are heavily scaffolded, scaffolded pieces that say to do, you should look for those to do's. You should look for things that talk about listeners and think about this connection between the view and the experiment activity. There's a little bit of a visualization. So the experiment activity is going to implement in some way, again, different ways of doing this, a trial listener. And it is going to set that trial listener with the um, menu. And when something happens in the menu, it's going to actually call and tell the trial, hey, I've got something for you to do. Um, what you're gonna wind up doing is actually recording the result, right? So that's what the experiment is gonna do. The to-dos, are actually an experiment activity and it's very clearly written out that you really need to think about um, making sure that you're checking for objects before doing that dot. So make sure whatever is on the left of the, the dot notation is not null, very, very important. Um, and really think about what is going on here, okay? So that is sort of where I'm going to leave it. Again, for your, for Monday, you need to make sure that you are implementing or at least making progress on your, um, your linear menu and your pie menu. Um, you are gonna need to design and implement your custom menu and turn in the code by Thursday. If for some reason you have trouble and you can't get a custom menu written, uh, we will, by the lock date, we will give you an APK that will allow you to do the testing of your code. Um, and then you will run an experiment and we'll talk about the experiment next week. So you don't have to worry about that right now. You just right now need to implement the pieces of, uh, of the uh, application so that you can test it in the way I was just showing you. 
We will talk about this more on Monday. So there you go.